Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do an unboxing and detailed review on this Black & Decker Thermal 12 Cup Programmable Coffee Maker. Model number CM2046S. This sells at Walmart and on Amazon for $49, so basically $50. Bucks. Okay, so let's open it up. We get an instruction manual. So I always recommend laying these on, your, on the side and pulling them out from the side. Okay, it comes wrapped up in plastic pretty good. Okay, so this is everything you get in the box. You get an instruction manual, stainless steel carafe, and a coffee maker. So let's look at the carafe. Um, it's got a button here you've got to press in order to get the coffee out. This top area seems really big, but it is 12 cups. And then to open this, you just push it to the side and it lifts up. There's the lid, there's the inside. So a pretty large capacity. Um, the handle's nice and big. And to put it on, you just line it up, and then you can push the button. So it does have some metal on it. Um, it's got a lot of plastic. There, there is no warming plate. So anytime they put a stainless steel carafe, um, this is going to keep the coffee warm. They're not, they're not relying on a warming plate. So the nice thing about these coffee makers is, is so when they're done brewing, they shut off automatically. You don't have a warming plate on keeping a glass carafe, um, keeping the coffee warm. So the stainless steel, and I've checked these stainless steel coffee pots. They keep, they keep the coffee warm for two hours, even longer than that. But it might go down about five degrees after two hours. So here we've got the control panel. Great big button, looks like a start button. We can see how much water we've put in. Got a nice big lid. There's the brew head. I think they call that like their vortex. Here's your brew basket. Okay. It's got the standard plunger in the bottom. So when you uh, take the coffee pot out, it, it pauses the brew. It's a basket style, so it doesn't come with a reusable. You've got to buy a paper filter to put in there. It's got a nice big opening for the uh, water. This is where you pour the water. So you're going to pour your water in here first. I like that this is on the front. You can see how much water you've poured in. It is pretty tall, though. We're going to measure it here. That snaps. So around the side, you do have, if you overfill the water reservoir, water will come out this hole right here. Um, it looks like, yeah, you do might have some cord storage. That's a really small opening. Let's take a look at the bottom. So this is a 60 hertz, 750 watts, 120 volts. Really, really lightweight. Very, very lightweight. Um, here's the plug-in. It's a two-pronged plug. we got to cut this zip tie off. Okay, let's go over dimensions really quick. So about 10 inches front to back. Uh, again, about another almost 9.5, maybe 10 inches set left to right. So unfortunately, this will not fit under a standard kitchen cabinet. It does have a pretty tall lid. Um with the lid open, it's about 22 inches. Standard kitchen cabinets are about 19. So just to the top of the unit, it's pretty small, about 13, but you've gotta be able to lift that lid all the way so that you can put the water in and get to your coffee. I measured the cord. It is 24 inches, two feet long. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, so with it plugged in, it's gonna flash 12 at us. Let's set the hour. So if we just come up here and press the hour in a minute. So it's only got a really small PM light. See how it's just got that little bitty PM light right there. Let's, um, let's see, I don't think it has an AM light. Nope. So when there's nothing displayed, that's AM. Okay, so the clock is not backlit. Um, it's pretty easy to see. I, I, I do like when they're backlit, but you do have a strong brew. That's a little hard to see, but when you press the strong brew, it says strong. And then you've got a brew later. 
So we'll go over and show you how to set that. Then you got this big power button. So that's going to start the brew. And it's got a blue light that comes on. And it looks like it's pulsing. So we'll try that. So again, the display is pretty small, pretty basic. Um, but it looks okay, I guess. So again, the coffee pot does look pretty nice. So let's go over the box. Um, keeps coffee hot for hours. So this has four layer vacuum sealed carafe. Huh? Never heard of a four layer one. It does seem a little bit bigger than a normal 12 pot stainless steel carafe, but again, there's that vortex brew head. Cool to touch. Yeah, this, this never gets hot, which is a nice thing. It doesn't, you can set this. So after it's done brewing your coffee, you can set this on the counter. It doesn't get on the hot on the bottom or anything. And it is programmable. Again, they've got the basket style filter checked. It takes um, eight to 12 cup basket style coffee filters. Again, this does not come with a coffee filter. So you've got to buy some coffee filters. Mm, it does, does have a washable brew basket. Easy view window. Yeah, I like that. Digital controls, fresh brew timer. So it must have a timer. When it's done with the brew, it probably changes to a timer. Some of them do that. Brew strength. Auto shut off, programmable and brew later. So when you first get a coffee maker, they want you to run a pot of water through it. So fill your fill the water reservoir up to the 12 mark. Leave this empty. Make sure it's installed though. This is your brew basket. And fill this up to the 12 mark. And then hit the brew button. And that'll run a fresh, what a, like a water rinse through the coffee maker to kind of clean it out once. That's what they want you to do. When, that's called the setup procedure when you first get a coffee maker. Okay, so let's talk about this brew basket. It's got these nice little handles on the side. It's got this big letter that says back. So that's going to go, and there's kind of a cutout for it here. So that's where that goes. If you don't have it right, like if you've got it off or backwards, it doesn't really want to go. But the first way you're going to know is so the lid's not going to close. So make sure that that back is towards the red part and it should spring down so that when you close it, you can snap it. So here's a 8 to 12 cup uh, reusable basket coffee filter. So you, you it does not come with this. You've got to buy this separately, but it does fit in there okay. Now you're only supposed to use one or the other. So this is a reusable coffee filter and this is a paper coffee filter. You're never supposed to use both, only one or the other. So I'm going to do my, I like to use coffee filters. So again, it's a basket style. You're just going to put it in here, kind of push it down. Make sure it's hugging the wall. We're going to put our coffee grounds right there in the middle. Okay, before we begin, I want to talk about this. This is the brew basket. You always have to have this in there. Now, there's a little, there's a little plastic washer down there. That's what holds this plunger. And then there's a spring. So sometimes that little plastic washer can come off. It's kind of hard to go down in there and grab it. But that plastic washer can come off. And you may find that this plunger and the spring are like in your dishwasher at the bottom or in the bottom of your sink. So I just want to show you this is how it goes. You'll put the spring on it. You'll put the plunger from the bottom. And then that little thing's going to stick up. And then you're going to wrap that like white plastic washer around it and that's what keeps it up or keeps it installed again when you've got the coffee pot installed it lifts it up and then the coffee can go out okay so another thing to keep in mind so with these stainless steel crafts you can't see if there's any coffee in here or water in here with a glass one you can always tell okay i got coffee from the last brew i got to dump out always make sure this is empty because this coffee maker it doesn't care if there's water in here or not it's going to brew and if this thing was say half full and you're going to do a full pot um, it's just going to come out over the coffee maker and make a huge mess so that's the only drawback i do like these stainless steel crafts they're very easy to work with the, the coffee maker shuts off when it's done but you have to make sure they're empty when you start your brew because it's easy to walk up here and not like just give it a shake make sure okay it's empty you always have to do that because if it makes a big mess if you don't. 
So this is a pretty well written instruction manual that comes with it. And their ratio is one cup, one tablespoon of coffee grounds. So since this is a 12 cup coffee maker, I'm gonna put 12 tablespoons of coffee grounds in the filter. But this coffee maker, you can brew anywhere from two, four, six, eight, 10, or 12 cups. The way you do that is, is that's the amount of water you put in. So whatever amount of water I put in is what it's gonna brew. There is no button you select like four cups, two cups, six cups. When you turn this coffee maker on, it's gonna brew whatever is in the water reservoir. So I'm in control of how many cups I brew. I'm gonna do the 12 cup today, so I'm gonna fill it up to the 12 mark. But if you only want eight cups, fill it up to the eight cups and only put eight tablespoons of coffee grounds. Now you're in control of the coffee grounds. If you like your coffee a little stronger, you can put in a few more. I wouldn't go any more than 12 tablespoons. So like if you're gonna brew a four cup pot, just fill the water up to the four mark and just put four tablespoons in and see how it tastes to you. You can, uh, you can go more or less with the coffee grounds, but just put the four up to the water level because this will brew whatever amount of water you put in here is what it's gonna brew. That's how you're in control of how much coffee it brews. So we're gonna put the coffee grounds in, we're gonna put the water in, we're gonna time it, we're also gonna do a temperature test and we're gonna do a taste test at the end. Okay, so for this, we're just gonna use normal coffee maker grounds. They're ground at a medium grind. It might say like drip coffee maker or, but just standard coffee grounds. These are ground at a medium grind. And so get your tablespoon. So one, two, I'm gonna put 12 in there. Okay, you can see I've got my 12 tablespoons of coffee. They're kind of centered in the filter, but that's what it looks like. Now using the stainless steel craft, I'm gonna fill this up with fresh water and I'm gonna use it to pour into the reservoir. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna first use it with the lid off, but I gotta make sure to put the lid on when I'm done and I put it underneath the coffee maker. But it's a little easier to see the water and the water goes in a little quicker without the lid on. Miss Fiona wants to help me. Hi Fiona. She's my buddy, she's always helping me with my reviews. Okay, so I've got the water. It can be a little hard, but we're gonna use the, the glass or the view on the front to see how much water we've added. Okay, so see, I need to go a little bit more. And don't overfill it, go right to the 12 mark, okay. Now I've got some leftover water in here. I've got to go dump it out. Okay, so now I want to make sure and put this on. This is empty. Okay. I'm going to put it underneath here like that. Now the basket does lift up a little bit, but when you close it, the lid, the lid pushes it down a little bit more. I've got my water, my coffee grounds. Close this. Make sure you snap it. And all you got to do is come over here and hit the start button. If I wanted to do a strong brew, I would have hit the strong brew first, but I'm gonna do a normal brew. I wanna time it and see how long this takes. Okay, so it starts brewing almost automatically um, as soon as you press the button, and that blue light is kind of pulsing. And we can don't, I don't recommend doing this, but I'm just gonna do it for show purposes. You can see that the brew has started. Now, I've reviewed other Black & Deckers that have this vortex. Now, it doesn't necessarily look like that because um, the water is kind of pulsing out. It's never really kind of like flowing out the whole time. So I'm going to lift this up so you can sort of see, see how the water, it just kind of pulses. It does kind of come out at an angle when it pulses it, but it's, it's not a con constant thing. So it's been brewing for two minutes. Let's take a look. There's the coffee grounds. So we can see, we can watch this as the water goes down. We're at the 10 cup mark. So that I'm gonna try to try to catch the temperature of that water, of the brew water. It can be a little tricky. So about 190. That's at the very top of the coffee grounds, 190. 
So here's some wording. I didn't read this earlier, but it says to keep coffee hot, preheat the carafe with hot water before using. So I guess they want you to fill this up with hot water first and then dump the hot water out. I wouldn't dump the hot water into your coffee maker. I would dump cold water into your coffee maker and then um, that'll preheat this metal on the inside, get it all nice and warm so that when your coffee goes into it, it'll keep it even a little bit warmer. But we'll do a temperature check and see how, how warm it keeps the coffee. So this coffee maker is quiet. Um, I imagine towards the end it's going to get a little louder, but um, this doesn't get super hot yet, but it might towards the end. Again, make sure you snap down. You know, it looks really nice. It's got a little nice little design there. Um, it looks it looks pleasing overall. The handle does kind of block the clock a little bit. But overall, I'd say it looks like a very nice coffee maker. Okay, so it's been about seven minutes, and it looks like we're about halfway through. I'm going to take a peek in here. Okay, so the coffee grounds are doing good. They're not overflowing the filter. That's a good sign. Now it's got that pause brewing, so if I want to grab a quick cup of coffee, even though this isn't done yet, I can pull this out. And again, that plunger right there is going to stop the coffee. You might get a couple drips. That's normal. But I can pour me a cup of coffee real quick. And then when I put this back, the brew continues. It pushes up that plunger, and then the coffee comes out. So I'm reading in here on the manual, so it does have a clean light. So the screen will, will scroll clean after 60 brew cycles or when calcification is sensed. So this thing will tell you. So the word clean is going to come across the display after 60 brews or if it senses that there's mineral buildup there inside on your heater. I'm going to do a separate video on show you how to descale this with white vinegar. We're going to follow the manufacturer's instructions and I'll show you how to descale it. Okay, so we got about almost four cups left uh, still we're not overflowing the filter basket so that's good okay so we're getting towards the end of the brew again we're doing a really good job up here with the filter so the water coming out of the filter basket at the bottom is about 196 okay so we're finishing up it never got super loud um, you kind of hear that standard kind of popping a little bit and you do get a little bit more steam towards the end. Now this does get pretty hot towards the end, but it never got super loud. This is one of the quieter coffee makers I've, I've reviewed. So again, right now we're displaying normal time. This is going to go to a countdown timer to let you know how long the pot of coffee has been sitting there. Okay. So it just changed over. Now it says 120. That's 120 minutes. And it's going to count down from there. So it's a two hour timer and you got to do a little bit of math to figure out. So when that says, you know, a minute 10 or 110, you know that it's been sitting there for 10 minutes. So this did take almost 12, 13 minutes, right around the 12 minute mark. So that's a cup a minute. That's pretty standard for a uh, drip coffee maker. Now we're going to take a peek up here, see how the coffee did. Again, be careful. There's quite a bit of steam that comes around that that can burn you. Looks like it did a pretty good job with the coffee grounds. Yeah, the coffee grounds did not overflow the filter. If your coffee grounds go up above the white filter, they'll go around and into your coffee. So this coffee maker did a really good job. And it brewed all the water that we put in back there. Okay. So now we can see it's counting down. It says 119. We know this has been sitting there for a minute. So let's see how this. So it is, it's pretty heavy. When you got a full pot, that's a pretty heavy pot of coffee. And again, we're going to have to press this button. Because nothing comes out until I press this button. So this, this is a really hot, heavy coffee pot. So you just be aware of that. I'm eating. So I just have to barely press the button. It pours really, really nice. And I just can't stress that's a really heavy pot of coffee. Okay. So that's, that's a really hot cup of coffee. 
even though we didn't preheat the carafe, that's 175 and it cools off really quick. And my cup, my mug wasn't preheated either. So that's a really hot cup of coffee. Okay, so it's been a little bit. I've let it cool off. Uh, I, ch I tasted it black. I, I don't drink coffee black. It, it tastes pretty bitter to me. So I try it with cream and sugar. So I just taste that. That tastes like a really good cup of coffee. I'm always surprised. And I, I, I sell Black & Decker short. I don't know why, but they usually make a pretty good cup of coffee. And, I'm, and once again, I am very happy with this cup of coffee that this Black & Decker coffee maker makes. You know, sometimes their coffee makers, they appear cheaply made. Um, they appear on the cheaper side. You know, and you don't, I don't necessarily think of Black & Decker as a coffee maker, for say. I think of them kind of as a tools, but they do make some pretty good coffee makers. So this coffee maker, it doesn't claim to be fast. So this was not a fast coffee maker, like a speed brew or anything. It's definitely going to take you 12 minutes. So basically a minute a cup. So if you do four, it's going to take, if you do a four cup pot, it'll take four minutes. It's just a basic coffee maker that does a really good job. Okay, so sometimes a little surprising. I'm, I'm surprised the blue light is still on. Um, that might be just because we're still in the countdown timer. Now the coffee maker is off. I'm not getting any hot water. The heating element's not heating. You know, there's no heating element down here. Normally with these stainless steel carafes, the coffee maker shuts off completely. Now I do think the coffee maker is off. This blue light I think is on just because it's doing the countdown timer. So let's say you're done and you want to go, if I press this button, it's going to go back to normal time. That gets rid of the countdown timer. Now the countdown timers are nice. They say the longer your coffee sits in a in a pot, that it does get more bitter over time, and the you know you get some of the last drippings from your um, your coffee basket. Some of those drippings aren't the best. So they do recommend um, drinking your coffee pretty quickly after it's done brewing. Okay, so I'm gonna show you cleanup now. After cleanup, I'm gonna go over how to do the delay brew. And then the last thing I'll do, we're gonna do a strong brew and I'll show you how long that takes. Okay, so with cleanup, again, be careful. This can be hot and there can be escaping steam around here. So be careful. It is best to let this cool off. You know, drink your coffee. You know, I have even come the next day and, and emptied this. But it does have these nice little handles for you to lift up, okay? And now it's not going to drip. That plunger is going to come down and I can take this over to the trash can and dump that out. It's not going to drip on me. It's not going to make a mess. So I just want to demonstrate this. It's a little easier to handle when um, it's a little lighter. So that, that thing works really well that you have to push. See, no, no coffee, coffee. That's a very nice design. Okay, so let's go over cleanup. Again, this is the filter basket. You leave this all together. You don't take any of this apart. Now it says wash by hand only. It looks like it's pretty sturdy enough. I could, I would probably put this in the top rack of the dishwasher. Now this, unfortunately with these stainless steel crafts, they get pretty big. You know, they don't, it says you can't put this in the dishwasher and it is awfully big to put in there. And same with this, usually these lids with these buttons, it gets kind of complicated. You know, you got a washer here. You got an O-ring and you got you got a kind of like an area down in there you gotta clean. So these lids can be kind of tricky to clean. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to set the time and the brew later. So first you have to set the time first before the brew later will work. Again, so right now it is 11 53 a.m. And again, I forget if it's got an AM. It's got a PM light. So the PM light comes on. So when there's nothing displayed, it's AM. Okay, so now we want to set the brew later. First thing you got to do is make sure you've got your water filled. Now, the brew later works just like a normal brew. If you only want to brew a six cup pot, then just fill it up to the six mark and only put six tablespoons in. I'm doing a full 12 cup. I've got 12 tablespoons. I got my coffee filter in. I've got it ready to go. If I was ready, I could just come up here and press the brew now button and it would brew the coffee right now. But I want to do this for five in the morning. So I'm going to press the brew later button one time. 
and it's going to display 12 or a time you've previously set. But I got to hurry up and set the time. So hit the button. And when it's flashing brew later, now set the time. I want to do 5, 15 a.m. Now again, make sure the PM light is not on. That's the only way you're going to know. Now, I didn't touch any other buttons, and the brew later light is on, is not flashing, and it's on. So now when I go to bed, that's all I have to do. I have I go to bed, the brew later light is on, it reverts back to normal time. I don't see any other buttons lit up. I'm not going to press the power button. Um, this is how I go to bed, and it will start in the morning at that time. Now, if I want to check the time, I press the button. It displays, yeah, 515. The brew later is flashing, and it reverts back to on, or it reverts back to leaving the brew later on. So now when I go to bed, yeah, that's the time it's going to start. Now, say I want to sleep in. I want to cancel it. You got to hit the start button and hit the stop button really quick. That cancels the brew later. So again, let's, let's press it. Set your time. It's going to stop flashing. It's set now. I don't do anything else. It's going to start in the morning. If I want to cancel it, hit the power button to hit it again. Otherwise, it's just going to start a brew right now. So just turn the power on and off real quick. That cancels the brew. The brew later. And if you want to do it, we're going to do a strong brew now. You can do a strong brew for a brew later also. You just got to make sure you put the strong brew on. So I press the button once and it turns it on. Press it again, turns it off. So the strong brew is on. I'm going to hit the, I'm going to brew it now. So just hit the power button. And now we're going to time it. Ooh, make sure I got my lid down. We're going to time it and see how long the brew later uh, takes. And I will do a taste test at the end of this brew later. So I can tell already, this is going to get a Just a, Just a Dad sticker seal of approval. I'm very impressed with this coffee maker. It is $50, which can be a little high for a coffee maker, but... Again, this display, there's nothing too fancy about it. It is simple to set. Uh, maybe that's kind of why I would like to see that maybe just be a little different, maybe look a little better, a little more modern. But other than that, it's a very good coffee maker. Okay, so with it in the strong brew, what I'm sensing is it's kind of starting and stopping a little bit. So what we get is, there's the coffee grounds. And it'll start, but then it kind of pauses just a little bit, maybe three or four seconds, and then it starts again. Um, when you're doing, when you're not doing a strong brew or a brew or yeah, strong brew, then uh, it's kind of a continuous kind of a, a process. So I'm anticipating this to take about four or five minutes more longer. I am going to time it, but that's the thing. It's doing, it's brewing the same temperature. It's just going to brew that hot water longer over time okay so this is the point where the older one was done about 12 13 minutes we still got four cups of water to go yet again let's take a look see how it's doing so yeah it does a little different brew um, the water definitely doesn't get as high in the filter basket and it looks like it does a little different with the coffee grounds it's just this is noticeably a longer brew Okay, so it's finally finishing up the the strong brew. That took 20 minutes, so that's an extremely long brew. Let's see how it tastes and do a temperature check. Yeah, about 170, maybe just a little, yeah, 172, 173. Okay, so now let's taste this. So that might taste a little smoother. Um, maybe just a, a, a tiny bit more bitter, but maybe just a little bit smoother. I, sometimes I do like those strong brews. Um, they do make the coffee taste just a little bit better. Again, I'm not a coffee taste expert by no means. I'm just trying to give an honest opinion. So let's take a look and be careful. This can be hot. So it did a little, you can see, yeah, here's what it did. Coffee grounds look nice and saturated. 
So yeah, all in all, great coffee maker. Again, my next video is going to be how to clean it with distilled white vinegar. You'll get a clean function that comes across a, a sane, and it has a cleaning mode. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Thanks everybody for your support lately. Um, I've been getting a lot of good um, comments. Um, I, I did this review from another reviewer gave me a comment on to do this one. I'm also doing taste tests with comments from viewers. I will put a link to this in my description to Amazon. Thanks everybody for watching and if you could please like and subscribe.